Hey there, folks. I'm TJ, and uh, welcome to an answer session. It's uh, something I'm going to be trying to do every weekend on this channel, is uh, put up a question and answer video, kind of a way for me to interact back with you and actually put this channel to some use. A lot of people ask, well, why don't you just do one of those live shows? And uh, while I do like some of the functionalities, I feel like the limitations are still kind of bad and lame. So we're going to be answering questions that uh, were submitted in the comment section of the previous video, the Ask Me Stuff video, and um, we're going to be uh, answering them in the order that YouTube says they are awesome. So we're going to be answering the top comments down as low as we can go. First question, do you still watch The Simpsons? You know, I haven't checked out a lot of the more recent episodes. I've seen uh, some of the newer ones. Uh, not, I mean, I've as as most of you probably know, there's a big Simpsons marathon on TV right now. It's every single episode of The Simpsons, twelve days on FXX. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I've been watching that somewhat, and uh, it's you know. Seeing all the classic episodes that I've seen a bunch of times, and they're still funny, and they still hold up. Um, I haven't seen a lot of the newer ones because, you know, they're really not the same level of quality. I think that's widely accepted. Um, that being said, I don't really think they're horrible now. I just feel like everything that could possibly be done with these characters has been done. Every joke you could tell has been told. Every situation that they could find themselves in, they have found themselves in. Um, I just think it's kind of played out a little. But, you know, uh, it's still good for a laugh every now and then. I've, I've liked some of the newer ones I've seen. I thought the Simpsons movie was pretty funny. Um, yeah, that's about it. What's the meaning of life? And that has five thumbs up. It's just like... A popular question for people to ask what is the meaning of life it sounds very profound um I don't really find it a very difficult question honestly uh, maybe that sounds arrogant but it's true and uh, I guess the if you, oh, what's the meaning of life what, what's the meaning of you know love and art and all these things and um one answer is that there is no inherent meaning. And I, I subscribe to that to an extent. But I, I kind of almost feel like it's the wrong question to ask. What is the meaning of life? Because if you actually look at what meaning is, it's, it's something that human beings created. Maybe we didn't create it as a conscious effort, but it, it, it's something that happened in here. Meaning is, is up here. It's a perception Meaning is, is something that only happens within the perception of a, a sentient being. You know, there, there, a, a rock has no concept of meaning because a rock has no ability to form concepts at all. And that goes for all non-living matter. And it goes for most living matter for that, you know. So, um, I just feel like if if meaning is something that only exists within us if it's only if it's something that only can exist on a perceptual level then we create meaning we're the authors of meaning and meaning is therefore whatever we make it and there's all of these different ways of looking at the world all of these different um philosophies ideologies out there uh that stem from very different worldviews different ways of looking at the world and perceiving reality. And so meaning is is always going to be contingent upon what you subscribe to. What is your worldview? You know, uh, maybe you feel like there is no meaning. It's all meaningless. Okay, then for you it's all meaningless. But if you find meaning in art or religion or philosophy, or science, or in all of those things, or in some of those things, or in something completely different, then that's where meaning is for you. Um, but we, we create meaning. And meaning 
is a concept that evolves with us. And rather than searching for some external source of meaning, we should realize that we are the authors of meaning and we should evolve the concept to whatever suits our needs. How do I get more subscribers for my God-bashing atheist channel? Honestly, I don't envy anyone on who's trying to break into YouTube now. I mean, when I did it, it was easy because uh, there were so many people who were just vloggers. That was the majority of what YouTube was, was, uh, was vlogging. And then, you know, the cutesy shit started cropping up slowly but surely, and that's what attracted the big audiences. You know, this used to just be a tool for people to get on their webcams and ramble on. And it, it's less and less that. That's still on there, but that's a small part of what makes YouTube work. And it's, it's certainly not the, the first and foremost thing that occurs to people anymore. But that's what I like to do, and um, that's what the site was mainly used for when I started, and apparently I was pretty good at it because I'm the only person from that era of YouTube that I knew that's still making shit, uh, that still has any sort of, you know, like, when, when, I, when I was, when, I remember when the big YouTuber used to be Mr. Renetto, Renetto, or was it just Renetto? I can't remember if it was Mr. Renetto or if it was just Renetto, but that guy used to be like some, so the, the biggest YouTuber, the biggest, and I think, I don't know, he had like 20,000 subscribers or something like that, and it was like, oh my god, that's amazing. How could anyone even have that many people listening to them on the internet? That's, that's crazy. I remember throwing a jubilant celebration when I got my first 500 subscribers. I was like, wow, this is incredible. Now there's been there's been days where I've gotten more than 500 subscribers. But um, I think it's a lot harder to break into now. Uh, probably your best bet is to find an atheist vlogger with some popularity to take you under their wing. Don't look at me. I've already uh, got enough of, you know, people I've helped out uh, for now. Anyway, not looking to to build anyone else up just yet. What do you believe is mankind's destiny? Do you think we'll destroy ourselves or be wiped out by a natural disaster first? And if you have trouble answering this because, dur her, I can't predict the future, then which would you prefer? Well, I would prefer that our species survive and continue to thrive and flourish, albeit uh, hopefully in a more logical manner than the one we've, you know, hitherto exemplified. Um... But I mean, what do I, but you know, it's not her dur, I can't predict the future. It really is. I can't predict the future. I can't. I'm sorry, but that really is the answer. There, there's no way to know. Um, I suspect that mankind would destroy itself before a natural disaster would destroy us. But who knows? The meteor that fucking wipes humanity out might be 20 years away from striking or 10 years away or three years away. We don't know. Um... So, you know, we, we could all be wiped out by a natural disaster, sure. But it seems far more likely as our technology increases that we'll be the, the ones who, um, you know, bring about our own destruction. If you could dispose of a corpse, how would you do so? Also, another question, if you believe in God as a child, how do you think you would have turned out as a person if I, if, if I believed in God as a child? Uh, dispose of a corpse, well, I'd just, I'd just shove it up my ass. That's what I'd do, you know. No one would think to look for it there. And, um... If I didn't believe in God as a child, um... I mean, well, if I did believe in God as a child, I don't know. I feel like if I'd believed in God as a child, um, I would have... I would, maybe I would have be maybe I'd be a better atheist now because I'd have actual first-hand experience of being a believer. Because most of the atheists on YouTube were believers at one point, and they have that first-hand knowledge of what it's like to be indoctrinated by religion, to be, um, 
you know, uh, in that sort of environment where if you don't profess to love Jesus, then you're, um, or whatever deity, then you're, you know, um, ostracized. That's the word I'm looking for. So, so maybe I'd be a better atheist now. Maybe I'd be a more informed atheist. Maybe I'd have a better idea of where religious people are coming from. Or maybe, like, like Cult of Dusty, I would just be even more anti-theistic because I'd be so pissed that I personally wasted so much of my time believing in such bullshit. So who knows? If you could have... If you could have it so anyone alive suddenly died, who would it be? To spice things up, if you can't think of anyone alive today who you wouldn't mind suddenly died, is there anyone from history you wish was never born? I have a very... I, I, you know, I, I'm not eager to go messing around with the past. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm terrified of paradoxes. The last thing I want is, is a paradox. I'd be scared of putting the universe in an eternal loop where the action, uh, you know, the, the effect precedes the cause and everything gets jumbled up and it just becomes this cycle of, okay, you know, the, the grandfather paradox. You go back in time and kill your own grandfather and then you were never born. But if you were never born, how could you go back and kill your grandfather? And You know, round and round the, the timeberry bush we all go. And um, that's no good. I know what you're thinking just now. Maybe you guys didn't notice, but I started with a Wendy's cup. And now I have a McDonald's cup. Ooh. Ah, true American fat ass. Um, anyway. Um, so I wouldn't... Okay, I'm sorry. I got off on a digression there. Um, the question was... If anyone, could, if I could have anyone who was alive suddenly die, who would it be? Well, um, you know, I'm not big on killing people either. I mean, sometimes I fantasize about it, like just taking a big fucking wrench and bashing someone's head in. But that's more like a visceral kind of thing. I, you know, intellectually, I don't want anyone to be deprived of life. It's why I'm against capital punishment. It's why I'm, you know, against. I'm not a exactly a pacifist, but I think war should be avoided when possible. I don't like to see people hurt or harmed or killed. Um, so I wouldn't do that, no matter how reprehensible I found the person, and I definitely wouldn't go meddling with history by preventing someone from being born. Um, will you ever start doing skits again? Get a big-ass white robe and pretend to be Mormon Jesus. Um... You know, I don't know. I, I probably will do some sort of sketch, you know, skits and shit, but um, I don't know when. You know, it'll, it'll happen when it happens. When I get the motivation, when I get the inclination, when I get the itch in my balls to just do that. If you could create any kind of drug, what would the effects be? And what's the name of the drug? Well, you know, no one can properly come up with that on the spot, to be fair. But, I mean, it's an interesting question. Um, you know, if I was going to create a drug, I guess the effects would be um, extreme trippiness, but something that also makes you not frightened of anything that happens so you could look at extremely dark and horrible horrifying imagery like you could think that the walls are coming alive and hands are coming out to strangle you and you'd still just be like that's pretty neat you know so even if you're having a bad trip it's just kind of like cool because you're detached from it in a way um so i guess that would be a pretty good one um and then maybe also like just a vague floating feeling of weightlessness and an expansiveness where you feel like you are communicating with the entire universe um you really have a sense of your oneness with things that'd be cool i don't know what i'd call it maybe i'd call it enlightenment 
but don't not the e you just put an n and then a period and then the space and then enlightenment uh if you had to choose to be born in any other country in the world other than the United States, where would it be and why? It's a very difficult question to answer because I think of myself as so fundamentally American. You know, I'm critical of America, and America deserves people who are critical of it. Um, but I, I do kind of feel like I'm fundamentally of this country. So it's kind of hard to conceive of a version of myself that isn't an American. But I guess that if I had to be born anywhere else, probably I'd just, I'd just want it to be some... I, you know, anywhere where I could walk down the street naked and smoke a joint and no one cares, that'd be neat. If there is a country like that, that's the one I want to be from. Um, why do you block those who call you fat? Don't you know that mockery actually helps some people get motivated to lose weight? If you don't want to fix your problem, then maybe you shouldn't complain about thin privilege. Okay, I have no idea what's going on here. Okay, first of all, I don't block people for calling me fat. If I did, I'd have no subscribers left because everyone has called me a fat ass at one point or another. Um, two, mockery does not help anyone do anything, you know, and even if it does, they're doing it for the wrong reasons because you're, you know, anything that just, you know, like there's no, there's no situation where just being bullied and made to feel like shit is helping you. Anyone who, who presents that to you as reality is full of shit. That's why I think like army training is full of shit like we're gonna deconstruct you first and then we'll rebuild you as we want you like that that's a horrible process that should not be condoned um anyone who who thinks that you know they're gonna ch change someone for the better through cruelty and just spitefulness no not gonna happen um and pretty much everyone who's fat gets called out on being fat at one point or another or treated differently because they're fat. So if, if mockery was really the tool to help them, to motivate them to lose weight, then there would be no fat people. Um, what do you think of Richard Dawkins' recent tweet regarding rape and abortion? You know, I, 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 don't, I don't follow all these Richard Dawkins' Twitter controversies. Because every time I've ever looked into it, it's so obvious that Dawkins is not really saying what people are saying he's saying. Like, it'll be like, you hear Dawkins fucking said this shit? He's he fucking blah. He said X. And therefore, he's bad. And then you go look at his post and you're like, oh, well, I could see how someone could misconstrue this as X. But what I really think he meant was Y. And people are like, no, he didn't mean Y. He meant X. We all know that. He's a fucking piece of shit. Um, but I don't. I don't usually keep track of all the Dawkins Twitter scandals. It's like every week there's another one. Who cares? Fancy a fuck, mate? Sure, thanks, Exile Phantom. I do fancy a fuck. I've always. I always fancy a fuck. Just there's never. There's never a time when I'm like, no, thank you, no fuck for me. How do I become more confident without becoming arrogant? Thanks. Why the fuck would you ask me how to not be arrogant? Um, do you still miss Hercules or you don't really care at all now? Um, Hercules was my previous dog who was a Maltese, a little white dog. It was originally my mom's dog, but uh, the dog liked me and Scotty better than her. Uh, so we kind of wound up being our dog. And, um, you know, uh, I don't feel myself actively missing him, but I definitely wouldn't say that I don't care at all now. Um, he was an important part of my life. Uh, I cherish my pets. I love animals. But uh, it's, he's been gone for quite some time now, so the, the, the sting is definitely not really with me anymore. Um, I've moved past that. 
but I still cherish uh, the memory of him. And, uh, yeah. Will you start an oil or banana challenge for charity? Stick a banana up your ass for cancer. Hey, now, that might not be such a bad idea. What are the thoughts you think when you have difficult moments? You know, I guess when I'm faced with something, a, a difficult situation, my, my thoughts are all hinged on how am I going to get out of this situation? Um, I know there's some people that they kind of freeze up. They don't know what to do. They just kind of want to wallow in self-pity or they want to blame everyone else around them. And maybe I, I do that a little. Um, but mostly I just try to think of a way out. Um, even if it's a long-term plan that doesn't immediately remove me from the situation, I figure working towards something like that is better than just giving up or and you know accepting it or whatever. Uh, what's your take on the Quinn Spiracy? This is a, a feminist game designer girl named um, something or another Quinn. I don't remember her, her whole name, but uh, she uh, basically uh, cheated on her boyfriend, did a bunch of underhanded shit, lied about it. The guys that she cheated with were, you know, gaming journalists and other game developers. Uh, and uh, basically it looks like there was some, you know, sleeping her way, not to the top really, but sleeping her way to a career and getting journalists who she'd slept with to defend her and be her white knights on the internet. And um, I really... Uh, you know, it, it's it's a little Jerry Springer for my taste. I don't really think it proves anything. It doesn't say anything to me about the ideologies involved. Um, just because she's a feminist and she did something bad, that doesn't in any way discredit feminism. Um, I, I, you know, I have criticisms of feminism, but I try to keep them um, on the basis of argument rather than character attacks. Um, I, and I don't particularly feel like the stuff that she's done uh, warrants my attention, especially when she's getting so much attention from the internet at large. Um, you know, there's definitely been occasions for me to attack people's character, but uh, I don't. I just don't feel the great outrage on this one. Um, I, I think it's interesting. I think that it's worth uh, paying attention to. But it's not something I personally feel any great need to comment on or uh, weigh in on in any way. Um, what do you think of Ren and Stimpy? I did not like Ren and Stimpy as a kid, but I do find that I look back on it with fondness. Um, I even enjoyed the uh, Ren and Stimpy episodes that were made a few years later uh, that aired on, uh, I think, S Spike TV. And it was very obvious in those episodes that Ren and Stimpy were, uh, you know, uh, attached to one another. Rom I don't know if romantically is the word, but, you know, it, it, you know, the Ren and Stimpy were clearly lovers with uh... <laughs> a lot of people didn't like those episodes, uh, thought they lacked the charm of the original series, but I actually like those as well. Um, yeah. 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 I know you listen to Immortal Technique. How similar or different are your political views to his? Also, do you have a favorite song or album from him? Uh, Revolutionary, Volume 1 and 2, probably my favorite album. Really the only album of his I've listened to uh, completely. Um, how, how similar are my political views? Well, not very. Um, you know, he has a lot of stuff that I really don't agree with very much. But I, I like the fact that he's talking about issues. I like the fact that he actually presents um, some in, an intelligent and articula well-articulated point of view rather than just rapping about how great he is, how no one can defy him. I mean, there is some of that in there, too. But it's, it's you know, I, I, I think it's it's kind of 
sad that, you know, rap music gets such a bad rap. <laughs> because so many of the artists that work in the, the genre, they want to do nothing other than, than glorify themselves. You know, I, you know, they talk about how incredible they are. Talk about how amazingly talented they are and how they could squash all the competition. You know, either that or it's about how much they party and how many big butts they, you know, get jiggled in their face. Not that I have any problem with getting big butts jiggled in your face or even writing a song about it every now and then. But when that's all you fucking talk about, it's like, you know, you, you, you work in one of the genres of music that has probably the greatest lyrical capability and you totally squander it on self-aggrandizing bullshit and shallowness and materialism and it's you know there's just so much emptiness so it's, it's you know immortal technique is a pretty refreshing break from that uh why do people willingly deny proof for their feelies. I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about, so I am gonna go ahead and skip you. Hey there, TJ. I wondering if you had the same problem or at what point experienced the problem of feeling every little thing you do is a selfish act. I constantly tell myself I'm selfish for a lot of things, and I feel I'm robbing myself of good times. An example would be friendship with new people. I feel, if I feel I'm going, I'm getting closer to being better friends with another person, I feel my actions and motives will entail me. I'm sorry, this is so horribly written. I can't get through it. Um, is this real life? No. This is just fantasy. You're, uh, Caught in the landslide, and there is no escape from reality. Uh, what is your favorite Nolan film? Mine is The Prestige. Mine uh, is um, Inception. I also liked Insomnia. I also liked The Dark Knight. I also liked everything that Nolan has ever made. Probably the worst Nolan film I've seen is The Dark Knight Rises, which I still think is a solid seven. How do you think the West should deal with radical Islam? Do you think bombing them is beneficial, or do you think it's counterproductive? The problem with trying to bomb radical Islam is that radical Islam is not a nation of people who all think the same. Radical Islam is uh, a subset of people within a much larger group of people who do not share their views. Now, there are far more radical Islamists than there are radical Christians, and radical Islam is a problem and anyone who thinks that we can always be peaceful and that we never need to uh, attack them, I think, is being a bit naive. Uh, these are militants who do have the desire to do you harm. Um now you can say that we bring that upon ourselves with our foreign policy and there may be something to that in fact I think there definitely is something to that but nonetheless they want to fuck our shit up and it may be that the best way to stop them is to destroy them but if a more peaceful solution can be found I'm all in favor of that and if that solution is total withdrawal from the Middle East, well, I don't know how economically feasible that is, but maybe it's better to take an economics hit than to be responsible for a very costly war in terms of not just uh, money, but blood. What is your opinion of Deadpool? I uh, barely know the character, honestly. 
I know that he is the most overly cosplayed character in the history of history. Uh, but that's about it. I know that he's like a smart ass and he's burnt or something. And he's like some kind of hitman or assassin or something. That's the same thing. But yeah, I, I don't know much about the character. He's never really fascinated me very much. How do I go about writing a book? You sit down at your computer and you stare at the white fucking word processing page and you type out a sentence and you look at it and you decide that it fucking sucks dick and you cry and you erase it and you write a new one and that one sucks too and then you erase that and you write it again and again and again and again until finally you kind of halfway like it and you're so fucking spent that you go downstairs and you smoke pot, and you watch 32 hours of Netflix, and you sleep for two hours, and then you get up, and then you go back and look at the sentence again and realize, no, this one's fucking shit too, and you erase it, and you write it again, and then you do that until the end of time or until you blow your fucking brains out, and that's how you write a book. Um, most awesome, amazing dream you've ever had. You know, I had a lot of really, I, I really miss having terrifying nightmares um, because I always thought they were a lot of fun. You know, I, I know it's kind of strange to, to like your nightmares, but I always did. I always thought it was so cool to be in this very macabre and threatening place. But maybe it's because I always know when I'm dreaming. And that doesn't mean I can control my dreams. I wish I could. But I always know, even when I am dreaming, that I am dreaming. And I can kind of consciously manipulate it and do that lucid dreaming shit. But not, not really. Mostly I just want to see what my unconscious mind comes up with. And um, I don't dream as much as I'd like. I wish that I could remember my dreams every night. But I can't. But probably the best dream I've ever had <laughs> um, There was a dream And I, have, I believe I've talked about it before I don't remember exactly where But I, I did have a dream once That I was in a, a trailer and the trailer, the internal walls of the trailer were lined with barbed wire and enmeshed within the barbed wire were fetuses, human fetuses that looked like chewed up peanut butter crunch. And uh, I was standing there in my boxer shorts and wife beater and the walls of the trailer came down, or at least one of the walls on the end of the trailer flopped open to reveal a, a tunnel and a track. And uh, there was a mine car, and I got into the mine car, and the, the ride began. It was like a roller coaster, a very slow-moving one. And um, the first thing that I remember seeing were limbless animals, camels and elephants and horses, all without their legs, but not on the ground, not with bloody stumps, just legless animals hovering at about the level they would be at if they did have legs, but they didn't. So just floating animals, floating legless animals, and then there was Hitler and... Uh, Himmler and Goebbels uh, all standing by a water cooler in an office-like setting and drinking from those um, pointy little witch hat shaped cups that contain like a sip and a half of water and they were kind of sitting there and Hitler kind of looked at me and was like hey he raised his glass to me and uh, then 
the ride came to an end and there was the devil and he was big and red, kind of like the devil from Legend with Tom Cruise. And the devil bent me over and my clothes vanished and he began to shove his massive red cock in my ass. But the second that the head of his cock touched my little pink sphincter, Satan melted and vanished. And I knew in my heart that it was because I was so evil and corrupt that not even Satan himself could touch me. And that was a beautiful dream. I miss dreams like that. Because to me, that's fun. Where was I? I think this person asked me before. Why should I not kill myself if in my life there is far more pain than joy? Surely that would be the logical decision rather than the survival instinct bringing me from outing myself. Thanks, TJ. No. If you find that your life is more filled with pain than joy, I would say welcome to the fucking human condition. And if the pain is so unbearable, then you should, should uh, search for ways to mitigate it. Um, do not extinguish the light that is you from this world, because whether you realize it or not, you are of value. And the pain that you are experiencing should, should be a reminder that you have been blessed, for lack of a better word, with the privilege of existing, with the privilege of perceiving reality, with the privilege of being able to be a being who can conceptualize and form ideas and thoughts and feel pain and joy and sadness and happiness and lust and love and hate and anger and every fucking little nuanced emotion that is above and below and beyond those things. You should be fucking overjoyed to be in pain. Pain is beautiful. It's a reminder that you're a living thing. And more than just being a living thing, you are a living thinking thing. And guess what? You don't like the ride. You think it sucks. It's a short one, okay? If you really want to die, then just wait. It'll happen all on its own. But in the meantime, why not just relish the moments of joy that you do have, even if they're brief and scattered? Have you noticed life speeding up as you grow older? If yes, when did you notice of it first? And how quickly does it accelerate? You know, I've heard this from various people that life gets faster and faster as you get older and older. I have not personally experienced this. My life seems to move in a very slow and leisurely pace. But, you know, I don't really, you know, there, to me... The past is, it's a meaningless little jumble of things that happened. And not even, maybe not even as they really happened, just as I remember them happening. And, uh, you know, I don't really remember when something was a week ago or a month ago. I don't really, you know, there's times when I'll talk about something that I think happened yesterday and I'll find out that it happened, you know, two months back. That's how bad I am with time perception. To me, there is only the moment. There's now. That's what exists right now, right here. The past is, is you know, some, some collection of memories rattling around in my head. The future is, is unwritten. It's not even guaranteed. I could die right this second, so there is no fucking future. 
And really, there's no past. There's just a rough sketch in your mind of something that you think happened. There's only now. There's only now. And it feels like now has been going on for quite some time. I don't feel like things are speeding up. Or slowing down. They're going at exactly the same rate they've always gone. Have you ever taken LSD or mushrooms? And what's your opinion of it? I have taken LSD. I thought that my friend's leg was growing at an exponential rate. And I grabbed his leg and I wrapped myself around it like a dog that was trying to hump it. And now that I think about it, I may actually have humped it. I probably did. Um, but other than that, I really don't remember much, honestly. I remember my perception being slightly askew. I remember being intently focused on things that normally wouldn't garner much attention from me. But um, I don't think I got a very strong dose, though. I told my parents that I'm an atheist, and they don't believe me. They say that deep down inside, I still believe in God, and that I'm trying to get a rise out of them. Can you give me some advice on what I should do? You can't control what other people think. So the best thing that you can do is just, you know, if they don't buy it, then just whatever. That's their perception. They can think what they want. You've told them how you feel. They refuse to believe it. That's on them. It's not your job to sit there and fucking convince them that you're an atheist. Um, but, you know, just continue to be honest. Continue to be forthright. Continue to be blunt. And, um, you know, hopefully eventually they'll fucking realize that it's not just a phase. Just like, you know, the, the lesbian that comes out when she's 13 and dad's like, well, she's just going through a phase. And then, you know, you know, 10 years later when she's at the altar marrying her life partner, Margaret, dad kind of by that point has realized, hey, maybe this isn't just a phase. And I'm sure your parents will uh, have the same realization at some point. Ever considered talking about Orthodox Christianity as in contrast Catholicism, your usual topic. How the fuck is Catholicism my usual topic? I talk about all, all sects of Christianity. Most of the criticisms I make could be applied not just to Christianity, but to, to most religions. So I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, hey, TJ, as a fellow submissive and bisexual, I wanted to ask you at what time in your life did you begin to realize that your personal taste in relationships, that that was your personal taste in relationships, and did it all correlate with your bisexual awakening? Um, I realized that I was a bisexual long before I realized that I was a submissive. Um, I, I didn't really have the words to express that I was bisexual, but I, when I hit puberty, um, my first sexual fantasies were of, you know, both genders. Uh, I wasn't just fantasizing about girls. I was fantasizing about girls and guys when I was, you know, 11 and 12 years old. So I knew that that's how I was. That's how I was wired. Um, and then there was, um, and you know, I, don't, I didn't think, I don't think I realized I was, I mean, I realized I was submissive, um, you know, at a young age. I realized that was what I wanted from a relationship, you know, around the time I was 15, 16, 17, and so on. Um, I probably really didn't, realize it fully until I was about 20 though that and I, even then I, I wouldn't have used the word submissive to define myself it, was, it wasn't until a little bit later 
but I, I kind of realized that my predilection was more towards being dominated, more towards being a bottom, more towards um, being controlled rather than being in control. Because I, 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 to me, control is, is an illusion. There is no such thing. Um, and I'd rather embrace the truth of powerlessness than um, foster an illusion of power. But also, it just gives me a boner to think about being dominated, where it doesn't give me as much of a boner to think about dominating. Although, I am a switch, technically, so there's a little bit of dominance in me. Um, and certainly, I'm dominant in other situations, non-sexual, non-relationship type situations. Can I chop off your penis and use it as a dildo? Um, it would be useless as a, as a dildo I, because it's so small when it's soft and it would be soft because it's not going to remain hard after you chop it off. Um, if you could somehow preserve it in an erect state, it would still be a pretty small dildo, but I mean, it would be somewhat useful, I guess. Um, might be a good first anal toy or something. Can you really prove that God isn't real? No. What's your opinion on the atheist YouTuber Steve Shives? I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Although he supports feminism and Coughlin, he can be very insightful. What's your thoughts on him? I have no idea who you're talking about. Who is sexier, Paul's ego or Tim the bartender? Um, for me, I would say Tim the bartender is sexier, but I like Paul's ego better. What do you want to see the most in Fallout 4? I would like them to not change anything other than just the graphics. Because I'm so fond of the system that they used in Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas that I hope that that remains largely unchanged. And the only thing that's really upgraded is just the aesthetics of the world that you play in. Um, I know that's probably not going to be the case. I know they're going to needlessly change a bunch of things that don't need changing just to give the illusion of some sort of progress. But I hope they realize that there's really no reason to fix what's definitely not broken. Uh, what was your first experience with marijuana like? And TJ, the amazing atheist, you are a legend, sir. Can I suck your cock? Of course you can. Um, my first experience with marijuana, uh, my first few experiences with marijuana were of me smoking it and dismissing it as useless and saying that it did nothing for me. And then at some point, it did do something for me. And at that point, I started being a stoner. Which is, you know, it's funny. I didn't become a stoner until I was like 27, 28 years old, something like that. When back in high school, everyone thought I was a stoner. But actually, I was, I was pretty straight edge, not consciously. I just didn't have much of an urge to do um, drugs. Uh, I mean, I did them here and there. But... I didn't smoke weed like almost everyone I knew did. And yet a lot of people thought of me as like one of the biggest stoners in the school. Just because I guess I had the look. The look of the stoner. Is life like a box of chocolates? No. Life is like a box of occasional chocolates, but mostly turds. Uh, what's your favorite horror movie? I guess most people would not consider this a horror movie, but my favorite horror movie is Idiocracy. Um, because to me, it, it displays the most horrifying of all possible futures. Uh, would you rather have the ability to see through walls or read minds? Um, Reading minds would definitely be the more useful. I mean, seeing through walls has some perks, like, you know, you could look at girls or guys showering. Um, 
You could watch people having sex through the walls of their houses. You could, you know, spy on anybody at any time. Um, and that'd be kind of cool, especially if you're sort of voyeuristic, which, you know, I think everyone has that in them to some extent. But, I mean, to read minds, as long as you can focus it and control it and you're not just overwhelmed every time you go into a crowd, that would be the better power. Because, I mean, you could read people's bank numbers. Uh, you know, you could find out their darkest secrets and blackmail them. Um, you know, you could... If any any sort of business meeting, you could search for whatever information they didn't want you to know in their head. I mean, there's just so many... It gives you the leg up in every social interaction because you know everything the other person is thinking. And if they're trying to fuck you over, if they're trying to betray you, if there's something they're trying to keep from you, you know, it's it's you know you you could spy on someone far more with the ability to read their mind than you can with the ability to see through their walls. Although it'd be cool to have both powers, strip both their mind and their body naked. Do you think the feminist debate? is ever going to end. Um, you know, probably it'll end or at least transform into something very different than it is now. Um, most ideas change and evolve as time goes on. How do you fire an employee the nice way? There's really no point in trying to be nice to someone that you're firing, it's probably just best to be direct and let them know that they're fired. Their employment contract has been terminated and they need to go seek employment elsewhere. There's no, there's no amount of cushioning that you're going to do that's going to make that news any better or more bearable. Um, you shouldn't go out of your way to be a dick about it. You should probably just be direct, upfront, that's it. Why are there so many male feminists? Because guys want to fuck girls, and if girls are feminists and guys think that they have to be feminists too to fuck them, then that's what they're going to do. Um, now, there's probably a lot of guys that are feminists that I'm selling short right now who you know, actually have strong ethical ideological reasons for being feminists, and I'm not trying to discredit them or demean them, but... Certainly, we must acknowledge that the other group that I just referenced does exist. Um, and I think we can all see them uh, for what they are when we encounter them. Um, what does Ben look like? That's between you and Ben. I'm not here to... You know, if, he, you know, if my friend Ben chooses... Not to reveal himself. What makes you think I'm just going to arbitrarily betray his trust and reveal him um, just because you asked me to? What do you think of transhumanism? Your opinions about transhumanists and the works they eagerly promote, life extension, nanotech, virtual reality, etc. You're well known for your atheism. YouTube name says it all, but I've never heard uh, about your position in those matters. I am a transhumanist. I do believe in the augmentation of human beings through technology. Um, I do believe that we can create a better human race. Um, I am not a passionate advocate of this. I don't think that there will be much of this within my lifetime, although I could be mistaken. Um, but it is something I advocate and support. Uh, albeit not passionately, and it's not something I devote a lot of my time to. Really, it's not something I devote any of my time to. But I am a, I am a silent supporter, and I'm not ashamed to admit my support. Um, I've got a question for you, amazing one. When the fuck are you going to get Galen and Howard Bloom on the same show? I don't know, probably whenever we feel like it. What do you think was really wrong with the people that were exercised in real exorcism? I am not asking, do you really think they were possessed by demons? I know you don't believe in that. I am asking, could there, be, could there have been something wrong with them 
that people were doing exorcisms just did not understand, like epilepsy, they were gay or refused to conform to society. What do you think? There's a lot of mental illnesses out there, and I think that most of the people who are subjected to exorcisms probably do not need a priest to throw holy water on them. They need um, psychiatric evaluation and mental health care. I like cats. Do you like cats? Um, you know, cats are okay. Some cats are okay. A lot of cats are dicks. I've met a lot of cats that were just assholes that I didn't really care for too much. But I've also met some cool cats out there. TJ, are you and or your wife a good cook? And if so, what are your favorite foods? And what do you and she cook best? I'm a terrible cook. Uh, she's a pretty good cook. Probably the best thing that she makes is, um, you know, the baked goods like cakes and muffins and uh, cupcakes and so on and so forth. Um, maybe that's just what I think is best because I have such a sweet tooth. On the Douchebag Bible introduction, you mentioned that you don't fully agree with some of the subjects touched in those books. Which were those, and if there are too many to talk about, do like a top number list. I'm sorry, I can't do impromptu numbered lists. I think that it's it's probably should be obvious uh, which statements I no longer uh, believe when you read those books, if you're familiar with my videos. What are YouTube partners going to do when they get old? Are they still going to be vlogging? What are you going to do, TJ? How the fuck should I know what I'm going to do in the future? Maybe I'll still be doing this. Maybe I'll be doing something else. Maybe I'll be dead. Maybe I'll be sick. Maybe I'll be brain dead or a vegetable. Maybe I'll be in fucking prison or maybe I'll be fucking drafted into World War III. How the fuck should I know what the fuck I'm going to be doing in the future? Do you know what you're going to be doing in the future? You might think you know, but you don't. All I can say is that I plan to continue doing this for as long as it benefits me to do so and I enjoy it. And I feel like it's something worth my time and effort and energy. Um, as long as that is the case, I will do this. The second that that's not the case, goodbye. But it's not goodbye yet. Is this a question? Yes, it is. Would you rather have legs the size of your fingers or fingers the size of your legs? And then he added as a PS, they'd still be functional. I'd rather have fingers the size of my legs. If they're still functional, then I would win at any fight with anybody because I could just kick them with ten fucking fingers that are leg-sized. Have you ever met Marilyn Manson in person? No, I have not. How do you get an atheist YouTube channel bigger? I think I already answered a question that was pretty much the same as that. If I remember correctly, your favorite film is Unforgiven, but do you also consider that the best film, or do you think something else covers that? Um, I, I would say that, for me, it's the best film. Um, best film is, of course, subjective. Um, you know, I, I think there's some objective standards you can measure film by, like, obviously, there, there's arts involved that, you know, are voted on uh, when it comes to Academy Award time by the, the you know, the fellow people, like, you know, cinematographers vote on who's the best cinematographer, directors vote on who's the best director, and so on and so forth. Um, but there's a lot of politicking there. Um, and, you know, critics, I mean, they all have their own standards. Uh, you know, so, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's different ways of looking at film, and I think there's some objectivity. I mean, I really kind of feel like sometimes like the subjective objective thing is more of a gradient than a rigid line of separation. Um, but I mean, I, there, there probably is film. There probably are films that are just better done than Unforgiven. There are probably films that are better written, better shot, better directed, better acted. 
but um, for me, this is, it's, it's the best film. Um, it's actually tied with Seven Samurai by Akira Kurosawa. And also, I think, with The Big Lebowski. Uh, it seems like gaming has largely turned to shit as of late. But if possible, could you tell us some recent games you have enjoyed? Well, I, I recently got a P, not a PS4, I got a Xbox One, which means that, you know, every time I mention that sentence, people scream at me that I should have got a PS4, or they scream at me that consoles are stupid and I should have a PC, or they congratulate me, <laughs> depending on what system they have or what they use to game. Uh, but so far on my Xbox One, I have enjoyed uh, Tomb Raider, the definitive edition. I have enjoyed Max, which is a side-scrolling adventure. I have enjoyed Strider. Um, I have n- I've play- I've played other games. I played R- Rise, Son of Rome. Wasn't too impressed with that. Played Dead Rising 3. Um, didn't, didn't find it very fun, honestly. Um... So there have been games that I thought were shit, and there have been games I thought were pretty good. And, uh, you know, I'm just waiting for fucking Tetris. I just I want to play Tetris on the Xbox One. And they're supposed to be putting it out on there. Um, I'm a Tetris geek. I just love Tetris. I know it's, like, kind of lame with all these modern games that are so immersive and interactive with such complex storylines. Um... But no, I still want to stack blocks and watch them vanish line by line by line by line by line. What's your favorite... Sorry, I've already answered that one. Are you willing to accept me as your Lord and Savior yet? And that's a user by the name of Jesus Christ. No, Jesus, I'm not ready yet. Come back when I'm on my deathbed. Sometimes you fit perfectly into the Murrican stereotype. Do you reckon you're much more negatively, stereotypically American than you'd like to be. I don't, I, you know, I, I like the way I am. Um, I admit that I am American. I'm not ashamed to be American. I have a certain sort of nationalism, uh, national pride. Um, Although I have serious criticisms of American society, and I think that America's values are askew, and I think that there's a lot of ways in which this country is lagging behind other countries. Um, But, you know, I still think of myself as fundamentally American, and uh, I don't apologize for that mentality. What is your favorite Marilyn Manson song? Um, You know, it changes... But probably one of the ones that I most consistently enjoy is The Reflecting God off of Antichrist Superstar. In the past, you've said you don't support the troops, but a little while ago on Tumblr, you said we shouldn't cut military spending because it employs a lot of people. So has your position on supporting the troops changed? Or if it hasn't, then why did you espouse such a pro-military position? I didn't espouse a pro-military position. I I espoused a um, pro-social welfare position because the military really is a giant social welfare program in a lot of ways. Uh, And, you know, I don't want there to be a bunch of -of out-of-work soldiers roaming the fucking country because that, to me, seems like a recipe for disaster. It's like after every major conflict... For a long time, a bunch of soldiers that come back to the United States and can't find work, well, what do they do with their soldiering skills? They become fucking criminals. So my plan is expand the Army Corps of Engineers and put these fucking soldiers to work in America building roads, rebuilding bridges, um, you know, just fixing... America's crumbling, shitty fucking infrastructure. You know, get get this country running smoothly again. Uh, we, we lose billions and billions and billions of dollars every year from shitty infrastructure. Will you spit a freestyle? 
I cannot freestyle. I am too white. Look at me. Look at this pale skin. I'm not Eminem. I'm not the rare exception, okay? Uh, can you talk about anarcho-capitalism? Do you think it has any valid points? Almost all of my friend have become ANCAPs, and I really don't have any rebuttal since it's mostly based on the guess that absolving the state... Absolving is not the word you're looking for, I don't think. Um, absolving the state will remove a lot of problems. I think giving corporations such free reign will make things more corrupt than we have ever seen. But are there any factual evidence of for any part of it? Also, is there a difference between anarcho and free market capitalism? Thanks for six years of great entertainment here in boring old Denmark, and thanks for maybe looking at my question. Uh, anarcho capitalism so first of all any you know any any sort of political philosophy that starts with the modifier anarcho like there there's there, there's no there's no different kinds of anarchy all right you can't say you you can't have a, a system within the lack of any sort of system you know, we're going to conduct ourselves in this way even though there's no governing body. It doesn't work that way. It just doesn't. And uh, I know that any anarchist who's watching this now is talking about what an idiot I am, how little I understand about anarchism. And I know that you think I'm ignorant, but if you actually sat down and logically thought about what it means to not have a government, then you would realize that there is only one kind of anarchy, and that's anarchy. There's no anarcho-capitalism. There's no anarcho-primitivism. There's no anarcho-syndicalism. There's none of that. None of that fucking exists. All right? Um, as for the idea that we'd be better off if the free market was in control, uh, there's just, I don't even understand how anyone could think that. Honestly, um, businesses want to make money. They don't give a fuck about the well-being of human beings. It's true that capitalism has, in many ways, improved the quality of lives of human beings. But when it's unregulated, it has a far worse capacity to subjugate human beings than, than to liberate them. Because to capitalism... Human beings are just another commodity to be bought and sold, and that's not the prevailing view of the human race that we should allow. Do you enjoy death metal or grindcore? No. Hey TJ, why did you let TAA devolve into such a shit fest? You used to have interesting content about politics and science. Now it's just a series of debates in which you and a bunch of fedora fags ridicule whatever Christian or feminist personality appears. Not to mention the clickbait that is every other video. I've heard it all for years. I don't particularly care. If you don't like what's happening on the channel, unsubscribe. Go away. Go find someone else who you think is better. Or if you think you can do better, then you try. Um, I'm going to make the content that I want to make. And you'll either watch it or you won't. And if you don't like it, no hard feelings. I'm not going to cry about it. I'm not going to get butt hurt. I'm not going to fucking say you're be like, please don't go. No, it's all right. If you don't like it. Don't watch it. Um, because you don't believe in ghosts, would, would going to a supposedly haunted house and debunking the paranormal be something you'd consider doing? Um, I guess so. Sure. Do you say bless you when people sneeze? Um, I will occasionally. I'll say, you know, bless you if I think that that's something the person wants to hear. They, you know, and, and they know that I'm an atheist and that, it, you know, I'm not actually saying that anyone is blessing them. It's just, you know, as a matter of politeness. Um, sometimes I'll just be like, are you all right? 
that's a good way to to show that you care without saying bless you. Or you could do the whole gazoon tight thing, but I don't know what that means. Uh, why do you guys block people so much on DP? Also, do you realize when you block people, they get unsubbed automatically? You're literally losing your audience by doing that shit. Tell Scoopy to knock it off. You know, you can criticize Scotty's methods of controlling the chat room, but at the end of the day, when Scotty's not there, the chat room is utter and total fucking chaos. And in fact, even with him there, it's still total and utter fucking chaos, just not to quite the same extent. So I think it's good that we have such a fascist moderating the chat. Uh, you know, don't do anything stupid and you won't get kicked off. If you could punch anyone in the face, who would it be? Probably Sean Hannity. Uh, what do you think of the stand-up comedian Louis C.K.? I think Louis C.K. is pretty funny. Uh, what was the closest you ever came to death, and did it change your outlook on anything? We were making, you know, we were driving in the car. We were trying to drive uh, Hercules, actually, to the vet because he was having a medical emergency. And we rounded a curve, and there was another guy going way too fast on the other side of the, the curve. And uh, we couldn't see each other because it was like a mountain. And uh, he nearly ran head-on into us. He swerved at the last second, spun out into the dirt. And, um, you know, uh, so we pretty, we, we pretty much would have died if the collision had happened. Um, I, I, I didn't, um, I didn't feel particularly, like, it didn't make me reevaluate things or anything. I mean, I always knew death was possible. I always knew that at any moment, something could happen to take my life. I, I know that even now, sitting here comfortably in front of my fucking webcam. Oh shit, a sinkhole. Pfft, the house fucking collapses. I'm dead. You know, oh shit, a stray bullet from a fucking shootout going out on the street. I live in a pretty nice neighborhood, but who fucking knows? Boom, dead. Oh shit, heart attack. Oh, uh. I know I could die at any fucking time. So, you know, just just being put in a situation where I almost do, it just, you know, whatever. That's something that could happen. I know that. Um, it's not something that's never on my mind. It's something that's always on my mind. Why aren't we making tests to babies and shit? We're not quite there yet, that's why. I mean, there's nothing ethically that's stopping people. Uh, I mean, maybe there is for some, but I mean, not for all. The real reason is just that, you know, we don't really have the technology to do much with it yet, but it's getting there. What is something you would recommend to do in life before you die? Um, the Whatever the thing is that you want to do most. Whatever the thing is that's constantly on your mind, whatever the thing is that is your 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 biggest dream, whether other people understand it or approve of it or not, you know, the thing that most preoccupies you, that's the thing you should be aspiring to do. Um, but, excuse me. I hear you like Tom Waits. Would you let us know perhaps what album of his you like most? Maybe mention specific tracks you like? Considering he's a performer with a broad range, what type of stuff that he does do you like more? His croony type stuff or his more avant-garde compositions? Do you, how do you feel about his recent album, Bad As Me? Also, on the topic of music, what else are you into? I'm a big fan of Frank Zappa. Ever listen to him? I'm not into Frank Zappa. I know a lot of people like him. I never saw the appeal. Um, as for Tom Waits, my favorite Tom Waits album is Blood Money. I tend to like, I guess, his more avant-garde compositions. Uh, my favorite Tom Waits tracks, or at least some of them, um, 
Little Drop of Poison, that was in the Shrek 2 soundtrack. I don't know what album it was from. I like my town with a little drop of poison. Um, I like Hoist That Rag. I like Rain Dogs. I like um, Dirt in the Ground. I especially like the the live version of Dirt in the Ground from the uh, Glitter and Glitter and Doom tour. I don't know. Um, I'm a big fan. Hey TJ, I'm currently at an outpatient clinic. This is a really long one. Fuck that. Um, skip ahead a little. Give some of the people who are not as highly thought of by YouTube a chance to talk about their shit. All right. Why are you attacking our families? Because your families are a bunch of fucking stupid, worthless, cock-sucking assholes. Why, are, why, is, why is cocksucker an insult? It's such a pleasant thing. I don't know why assholes an insult either. Also very pleasant. I guess they can get shitty, though. Is pedophilia a sexual orientation? I don't know. I guess that kind of depends on what you mean by sexual orientation. And I don't know. I mean, I would leave that shit to the DSM to decide. I'm certainly not qualified to comment. Um, TJ, what do you think of the prospect of holodecks like the one in Star Trek The Next Generation? If they were introduced to near-future society, what do you think would happen? I think people would spend all day fucking holographic sexual partners. I know that's what I would be doing. Uh, do you think Dulcet would be worthy to be studied in art history because of his influence on so many other erotic artists. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Dulcet is a guy, uh, I guess it could have been a woman even, probably not, uh, who specialized in eroticized drawings of uh, torture and subjugation of females in a society where uh, cannibalism was uh, approved of and enjoyed by most people, and women were the primary um, source of meat. And, uh, of course, this is all portrayed in a very erotic manner. Um, I don't think he belongs in an art history course because, first of all, I don't really agree that he's been a tremendous influence on the erotic artists of the Internet. Um, second of all, his art by current standards of, you know, go to like hentai foundry or, you know, any sort of site where people are posting erotic artwork and, you know, the the quality standards are much higher now than they were when Dulcet was doing his shit. Uh, his stuff is kind of primitive and archaic in comparison, although the subject matter is still interesting if you're into that sort of thing. How do you feel about... Ray Bradbury. You know, I've never actually read any Bradbury, so I'm kind of ashamed to admit it, but it's true. Uh, one of those things on my to-do list. Uh, what do you enjoy doing more, TAA or the Drunken Peasants? Both are great. I would say recently I've enjoyed doing the Drunken Peasants more, um, though I think The Amazing Atheist is still more important to me and my number one priority. Um... But, you know, the drunken peasants doesn't even feel like work. It just feels like hanging out with a bunch of guys talking to shit, which is, you know, something I enjoy doing. Um, so it's kind of cool that I can just do that, and it's a show. Um, I think that we'll wrap it up here. Let's just maybe do five more, and I'm just going to scroll and select at random. Why does the gaming community seem like the opposite of the film community? When Michael Bay makes a movie, people tear it apart, and rightly so, for being mindless action with no story or good characters. The gaming community, on the other hand, seems to attack any genre of games that aren't mindlessly hand-eye coordination action games, such as RPGs and strategy games, as not real games, despite the fact that they actually make you think. 
Though I am a fan of both, I wonder if this attitude that a lot of gamers have contributes to how gaming isn't seen as an art since the community seems so mindless. What do you think? Um, well, first of all, let's remember that the Transformers movies are huge blockbuster hits that are widely beloved by a ton of fucking people. And it's the same people who like those mindless action movies who like those mindless action fucking games. They're the majority of people in either circumstance. But, um, you know, there's, there's always going to be people who challenge that status quo and say, no, this can be more than just some mindless, superficial fucking action cliches. Um, and that there's always going to be people who are, are film enthusiasts who feel that way, and there's always going to be people who are game enthusiasts who feel that way. And um, they're the ones who are right, and hopefully they're the ones that will be vindicated. So that was one. I've got four more. Do you believe some fetishes are innate or that they are developed by some childhood experience? That's an interesting question and one I've often debated in my head. I think that probably some are innate, or at least that some people have certain predilections towards certain fetishes. Um, but I also think that probably there are factors in upbringing that contribute. So I think it's probably a little bit of a mixture of both things. Uh, are you ever going to put new videos on Blip? No. Uh, maybe, I don't know. It could happen, but uh, probably not. TJ, how does it feel to stick a banana up your ass? It feels the same way as sticking pretty much anything else up your ass. So, I mean, if you know what that's like, then, you know, it's the same. If you don't know what that's like, then go find out. Quit being a fucking coward. Just give it a shot. You might enjoy yourself. Um, who is your favorite doctor on Doctor Who? Um, probably, um, I don't know. I want to kind of watch the new guy before I answer that. I want to kind of see how he does. Because I don't want to say that it's someone else and then he's really good and then I'm like, oh shit. Now I'm on the record as saying it's this other guy. Um, how big is Ben's penis? I'm making a sex doll and I, if I can't get the face right, I should at least get the genitals right. Um, you know, from what I've seen and touched and imbibed, I would say it's probably 11 and a half inches long and like this thick. It's like this. Yeah. So good luck with that sex doll. Um, I don't remember how many I have left. I'm just going to say two. All right. TJ, in your video called Rape, Feminism, and the Amazing Atheist, you say it's okay to have rape fantasies. I'd like to know if you think having necrophilia fantasies is okay. Any fantasy is okay. A fantasy is something that only happens within your own head. It does not affect other people. It does not affect the world at large. It is something that is completely and utterly within you. And if you're enjoying it, that's all that matters. Just as long as you understand that just because something is appealing in fantasy, it is not necessarily something you should do in reality. There are many more considerations than just your personal enjoyment when it comes to real life. But if you're just fantasizing, if you're just having a thought in your head while you wank, then that's your business and nobody else's, and it doesn't affect them, and it doesn't matter to them, and it doesn't matter to them if you write short stories about it or draw pictures of it or talk about it with other people who have similar interests. None of that is bad or wrong on any level. Uh, it's only wrong when you actually do it. And as for whether or not necrophilia is wrong, I'll let you decide that for your fucking self. All right, one more. Close my eyes and scroll. It's kind of between two, so I'll answer both. What gets you through life when everything feels bleak and meaningless? Um... 
I've kind of already answered that, I guess, in some of the suicide, the suicide question earlier. And this other one is just something about Christopher Hitchens. That sucks. We'll find a better one. All right. La, 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 la. Do you think long-distance relationships that usually start online can work? Isn't that how you met your wife? Yes, that is how I met my wife. We've been together for, I don't know, five years now or something like that. Um, I've known other people in successful long-distance relationships. Long-distance relationships can definitely work. Um, all right. I'm going to do one more. I want to close on a better question than that. you got to find a good closer question. So let's see. Come on, fate. Deliver us something good. Jennifer Lawrence, Emma Watson, Emma Stone. Fuck one, marry one, kill one. I don't even have a good picture in my head of what all those people look like, so... Fuck. All right. This is the last one. Whether it's fucking good or not, it's just going to be the fucking final. Okay. Nam and I already answered that one. All right, I'm too high up. I've already answered all these. All right, so down here. No, 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 no. Fuck. Oh, here's one. Okay. Final question. What makes you despise mainstream media so much? You know, I actually don't feel like I have as much hatred of the mainstream media as a lot of my contemporaries today in this generation. I feel like a lot of people dismiss the mainstream media entirely. Um, I don't dismiss the mainstream media entirely at all. Um, I think that a lot of what they report is completely credible. Um, I, I have ma my major problem with the mainstream media is the editorializing, which is done not just in the form of the opinions they might espouse about certain things, but it's also done in the f form of their decision to give inordinate amount of uh, inordinate amounts of coverage to events that are interesting to people, but maybe not so important. And then they neglect things that are important because maybe they're not as interesting. But that's because we live in a capitalist society where the news has to make money and the news doesn't make money by getting less people to watch. It makes money by getting more people to watch. So, of course, you know, more people tune in to fucking hear about Kim Kardashian's big fat jiggly ass than they do about, uh, you know, some conflict happening in Somalia or some shit like that. Um, and that includes me. I'd rather hear about Kim Kardashian's ass than a bunch of people dying in a third world country. Because like I said, I'm fundamentally American. And that's how I, that's part of how I'm able to criticize uh, America so much. It's part of how I'm able to criticize humanity so much. It's part of how I'm able to criticize this culture so much. It's because I am part of it. And I think it's always funny when people say, you know, when people act like I'm, I'm trying to act like I'm above all this stuff. You know, a lot of the criticisms I've made of people and of culture are things that are problems that I have. You know, I, I see these superficialities in myself. And, um, you know, that that's kind of how I have an awareness of it. Um, so I, I actually don't distrust the mainstream media, though. Um, I, I don't think you should ever judge something strictly by its source. I think you should always look at the facts. I think you should always look at the arguments being presented. I think you should always consider things from as many perspectives as possible and try to remove personal bias. It's impossible to do, but you should try. And then you should arrive at whatever conclusion you're going to arrive at. Um, and that's how you should be. I'm the amazing atheist. Well, I'm not the amazing atheist right now. This is TJ's life. But I'm TJ. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to comment on it. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll do this again next week if you guys enjoyed it. Peace.